Hey everyone, Paul ISM. So welcome to part 6 of our Great Wall Hobby F15 build. Uh, as you can see, new camera angle. Tried out one of my uh, last couple of reviews. Had it a bit further back. Uh, brought it a bit further forward. You could see the lights, uh, some of the wire and the camera or what have you. So put it a bit lower down. You've got the view of my uh, display case to be on. And unfortunately you get to stare at my ugly mug as well. So do apologise about that. Uh, F15, where we're at now, if we go to the overhead camera you can have a look. Uh, as you can see we've got the uh, horizontal stabilizers on, the uh, elevators are on, we glued the nose cone in position and we have also actually glued the nose in position as well. Uh, I did say I was going to leave it free for as long as possible, uh, I changed my mind, actually glued it in position um, just to get it out of the way done. It did require a little bit of filler, if we go to the overhead camera I'll show you. Uh, the nose were on fairly trouble free uh, as to this but need a little bit of fill at the top just there same on the other side and a little bit underneath when I say filler I mean Vallejo plastic putty screws in the holes and wiped off not left and sanded I don't think it warranted that still leaves the panel line again if there should be a panel line there I have honestly no idea but I'm not going to be uh, spending hours on end trying to fill that in so that'll be left as a panel line uh, in my opinion. Uh, like I say we've got the uh, horizontal stabilizers on. Again glued fairly uh, easy in position but again did just need a little bit of filler as you can see just along there. Only on the outer edges the insides are fine. Same on this side and these are just literally put in position. These actually pull off at the minute. Uh, they are movable when they're in position but to be honest I'm not a fan of things like that. The, F the F16 was different, um, that thing you can take completely to bits and show everything off. This, I will probably glue those uh, in position, leave them be and display it that. Same way I did with the MiG, the MiG doesn't move. The only thing that moves on the MiG is the cockpit can be uh, shut or opened and that's it. Uh, whether I'll do the same on this, I'm not percent sure just yet. Um, I'll play it on by ear for now, uh, but what I plan to do uh, today um, is basically we've got the canopy... It's got a seam on, so we have to remove that, which is great. Uh, we've got the canopy um, framework to add. That needs uh, glued in position. Uh, we'll polish up that canopy. We've got the uh, exhaust cans built. Uh, I did plan to build one on camera, but uh, and the way I normally do it is build one, have that uh, complete, and then I'll do the one in its component part to build it on camera. Sadly, chatting away to Cohen on Skype, uh, I just went into autopilot mode and built it. So they're both built, so you can blame Cohen for that one. For distracting me. Uh, then we'll glue the uh, canopy framework to the canopy, uh, glue the canopy in position and then we are ready for primer. So let's get some paint on this. Uh, now like I just said there's the uh, exhausts both assembled, both built ready to go. Um, so no problems there, probably six components in these if I can get this off. So you got the main body and then there was four parts and then this. They're literally glued in position. I'll zoom in so you can have a little look. We can get some camera zoom. There we go. So as you can see, just the component parts all glued together to form the burner. As you can see inside, a little bit of photo etch detail that's glued on from the back. So a nice bit of detail. We'll paint that the appropriate colour inside. And I plan to paint this in Mr. Hobby Buffable. Uh, most probably the dark iron. And sod's law, I've run out and I having trouble finding anyone in the UK of it in stock. I did order some from Model Design Construction, put the order through and got a refund this morning because they're out of stock as well. So we may have to go to the Far East for that. I'll have a look online again today see what I can find. But there's those in the component forms and then built as they should be. Uh, what we've also done our camera is we assembled this, just two parts. It's the framework for the cockpit. Uh, it fits in position. Roughly, I'm going to try and get it on. Now, when I was working out what I was going to be saying today, I was actually thinking to myself, make sure to tell people to be careful that this doesn't get snapped, and I went and snapped one part of it. Quickly glue it together. This just needs, that was glued, it was guessed where it was going to be. It wasn't a bad guess, but it just needs a little bit of manipulation back, and then we can glue it in position with the, um, the UV glue. Job done. As you can see, there's a very, very, it's just a, literally a slight seam just on top. So we're going to remove that in a minute. So they need gluing together and they go in position. From canopy, no problem whatsoever. There's no seam on this part at all. So that's not a problem, just need to polish up. Uh, that's about the afterburners. What we also did is we got the instrument cowling. 
I get you in shot again. This was painted up black. Test fitted the seams, sorry, sprayed the seams to test fit it. This one needs a little bit more attention, so I've had a little bit of filler on it. it. Needs a little bit more Mr. Surfacer, and we should be ready to rock and roll on that. Uh, good to play in a polish up with UMP buffer, uh, and we're ready for primer, like I say. A few more little uh, ancillary components underneath. There's a few uh, antenna and uh, whatnot. We've got a little bit to tidy up under here as well. Actually got some research in it. I forgot to have done that to be honest. So that needs tied down. Give it all the polish up. Get as many components on it as we possibly can. Uh, ready for primer. Primer up and we start getting some base colours down which will be excellent. It'll start to look apart the then. Um, and that's it. So like I said, just a little bit of tidying up we need to do on the fuselage. What we're going to do first though, we're going to move all that out of the way. We also need to dry brush those black parts. So I may do that now actually to get them out of the way. Let them fully dry, um, and we shall uh, leave those to one side to dry while we're doing the uh, DC and get a canopy. So, just a light grey. I'm going to have to move uh, some blue, I think, because my white's tangled up in my lights at the minute. A little dry brush. I've got a new one somewhere, which is an army painter one. It's an angled head. So, there we go, to angled dry brush. And left to dry unfortunately we give it a little swill and some brush cleaner as you can see it's an angled tapered head I just see it the other day thought that's quite cool we'll give that a go so we just got a generic light grey it's Mr Hobby H324 but any light grey will do I'm gonna move the camera back a little bit to keep you guys in shot and as always I'm just gonna load the brush up Trying to get up the ferrule because you don't want to absolutely cake the brush in there because it makes it a lot more awkward to move. There's my phone which needs putting on silent. Thought I had, obviously I didn't. I'm just going to dry brush. What we'll do first, this is the part I managed to break earlier. You can see just behind the pot there. Try and ease that back, hopefully not snapping it off on camera. Just apply a little bit of pressure and hold it. Make sure the brush is as dry as we can possibly get it. Hold the parts, like I say, they're quite delicate, so don't be too rough of it. You've seen dry brushing before, I'm just doing it on camera because to be honest, I completely forgot about it. I'll do as you can see, I'll try and keep you in shot. I've got a terrible habit of going out of shot, just so you can see what on earth I'm doing. So all the raised detail, as you know, you know how dry brushing works. Accentuate that raised detail. Until you're happy with it, add that worn effect. And I just need to be careful on this part I glued before. Working our way all the way around. Try and keep you in shot if I can. Okay, there we go, dry brushed. Uh, okay, so getting the brush nice and wet, wiping off every single bit of it you can see almost, then coming back, light your brush over like you see me doing just before, and that leaves you with this kind of effect. We've also got the head of display that's in, and as you can see, we just got all the raised surface detail like that, and on the other part, like so. So it just adds worn effects to all the raised areas, all the bolt heads, and it just gives it a nice look. So there's that done, so that's ready. Well, what we're going to do now is we're going to de-seam this canopy. So we need several things, which I probably can't get to because they're trapped in my drawer behind the camera. No, they're not. So we've got Tamiya polishing compound in fine finish and coarse. I also have the wax as well, so we need those. Uh, we need a sanding stick, now don't use a brand new one, that's brand new, really coarse, use one that you've used a bit, there's a bit duller like this, so don't use a brand spanking one, make sure it's one that's a little bit duller because you don't want to be taking off everything off the screen, a little bit of masking tape and a polishing cloth as well which we're getting a little bit, so what we're going to do first is we're going to mask up just on the edge of the seams because we don't want to be uh, sanding anywhere, we don't really need to that just creates 
more clean off for us, which we don't really want or need. So just a little bit of masking tape. I'm just going to concentrate on this front part. I'll do the back bit off camera. Then we'll come back and show it being polished. Now another good idea is to fill the inside of the canopy with white tack or something along those lines to give it a bit of strength. But we are, it seems to be a very, very strong canopy, so we're not going to bother. Put that out of the way, and it's a case of get your polisher or your sander rather. Pay attention to where you're at, and this is just a very, very slight seam. This isn't going to take a lot of work at all. Fingers crossed, he says. I know this can be daunting. Um, I haven't done a lot of these myself. So, first time around, you panic a bit, thinking, oh my god. I've got my Mustang to do, my one four, uh, sorry, my 172 Tamiya one to do. 172, 132 Tamiya one to do, and I know Cohen struggled a bit doing his. At some point we will do a guide on ISM on doing it, but it's as simple as this, it's just mask off the edges so you don't have to do too far. Same as when you're filling. Pick your point where you need to sand to, which is just to that framework there. Just take your time on any edges, you don't want to be going any further than you really you need to. Same at the back, don't be going too far. And then once you've done the straight line, I come back with some circular motions. A little feel. There you go, that's totally gone. So what you're left with is a frosted bit. I'll zoom in a bit so you can see. There's the frosted part there, you may be able to see it from underneath. There you go, you get a line underneath. Just where you're taking it back. Then you come in with your uh, polisher, buffer. Give it a buff up, which we'll do now. I'll try and keep you zoomed in, I'll try and keep you in shot. I'm not necessarily the easiest thing in the world to do. So yeah, you've got the 240 polisher, uh, sander we just used. I'm going to zoom out a little bit actually. Yeah, the 240 uh, sander we just used. Now we've got the 12, 12,000 sander, which will just take out most of that damage caused by the 240 sander. And we'll come back in with the polisher. Hopefully, we'll be looking the part. Fingers crossed. Again, get right down to that seam. Once you're happy, take your mask and tape off. Give it a wipe. Because we'll get ready. And now you can see that line we've got there. And it's a case of the buffer. Don't apply too much pressure because you do not want to break your, uh, your canopy for obvious reasons. The most stressful one of these I've done was that um, 132F16. That's a £140 kit. I didn't pay that, obviously, but... That really isn't a cheap kit at all. And that was rather nerve wracking because there's only two in there and getting spare parts for Tamiya's isn't really easy at all. So all we've got now, we've got the white buffer of the UMP buffer and as you can see, probably 90% gone. To be honest, probably doesn't even need polishing with any compounds but we might give it a go over with the fine and the finish. Just to make sure we're crystal clear. Just check you can't feel anything. Which I can't, so if you guys can see that, you can see the light. It's not too bad at all, it does need a little bit of a polish. But there you go. Easy seam removal, nothing to be scared of at all. Just time, a bit of preparation. We've just got this front one to do. I'll have this off camera and we'll come back in a minute and get the rest of it done. Okay, there we go, that's all done. Uh, both sides have been uh, sanded, buffed, polished, and there's no visible uh, trace 
of that seam now. So that's gone. Uh, nice and silky smooth, well and truly polished up with the uh, UMP buffer. So no problems there at all. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. What we've got now, we've got the Tamiya polishing compound, we've got a cloth and we've got a buffer as well. Um, for this purpose we'll use the blue one and we're going to be using the fine compound first. Branch bank in new to me. So probably going to be sealed, which they are. I have got some older ones, but I thought it was time to buy some new ones. So you don't need a lot, you just need a small amount. Even that's probably too much. So I'll have that off. And then we just want small polishing moments. You just think of this as a polish on your car. So apply it to where you think the scratches may have been and just give it a nice polish buff. And what there's in here, there's, there's cut and compounds. Sorry, I shot. There's cut and compounds which buff and polish all the scratches away so hopefully we'll be left with a nice shiny canopy now a lot of people will uh, dip the canopy in future or clear rather whichever part of the world you're from I, I'm not a fan of doing that uh, I never have been Tried it many times, never been that impressive result. I can see in other people's results and I can see the way it works. But for me, I prefer to just buff, polish, give it a clean over and do it that way. I'm going to put a little bit more on, we'll get another go over it, wipe it all off, then we'll go over with the, uh, the finish. Give it a good clean. Bob's your uncle, and then always you know, just mask it off. Glue it is in position. Am I ready for primer? Which is rather nice. Been looking forward to painting this thing. So this will be a primer, the Corsairs a primer. And my uh, reconnaissance Panther for Sig and uh, Sig for Seven uh, Hendrix Sig is a primer. So I've got a lot of painting ahead of me. Which is good because I enjoy painting a lot. So I'm doing up and down, side to side every now and then, and circular. Just so we get it all hopefully nicely polished. Again, we're not applying too much pressure because the worst thing we can do is crack the, uh, the canopy because getting spare ones isn't easy at all. I'm not quite sure what Great All Hobbies customer service is like. Be interesting to find out. So there we go. So we'll buff that off. We have a buffer here, which I really should just cut a little bit off. I can't. So we'll use it as one. It's not a problem. And again, we're just buffing it off now. Now, if you haven't got any Tamiya compounds, like I say, these are probably some of the best you can get. They're worth buying, but you could use car polish. Try and make sure it's uh, ammonia-free, so don't use T-cut if you're in the UK. You want a cutting compound, like a 3M. So if you know somebody who works in a body shop, or what have you, just get the fine finish cutting compound, and this should do the same job, because it's exactly the same stuff. So there we go, that's looking absolutely fantastic. Bit of a, not necessarily a limp free, free cloth because they're leaving bits behind, but never mind. Right, onto the fine. So again, we'll just pop that because it's brand spanky new. We'll pop the lid back on that one. They do work very well. <coughs> uh, obviously, the main use is for um, car body work if you're building model cars, but. They work super fine for doing this. So basically you've got a coarse, which is the red, the fine, which is the blue, and the finish, which is the, uh, it's a black colour box actually, white, uh, with grey writing. So this is just your final polish. So this is just going to really, hopefully bring it to a high sheen. Obviously the, the coarser they are, the grittier they are, because it's the grit 
actual compound itself that makes the polish work. So I've just got my finger in there now to give it plenty of support. to the front part, give it a final buff, and that's it, you can see the sheen we're getting on that, which is lovely, come back in with our final cloth, again not really a lot of pressure, a little bit, not too much, we don't really uh, risk in breaking the canopy at all. So I got my finger in there, look I've got sausage fingers which fit it perfectly. The benefit of having big fingers. There we go, we got a wipe inside as well to get any of my greasy fingerprints out. We should have one sparkly canopy. A little bit of a uh, uh, I'm on it in there, but no problems. That seems well and truly gone. There is no remnants left at all from removing the um, the seam. Crystal clear and nice and shiny as well. So this is ready to be masked up along with this part, which I'm not going to bore you by doing on camera because you've seen me masked up before. So I'll do it off camera. We'll come back in a minute and we'll uh, get the UV glue on the go. Get it all glued together. Get it on the can on the actual fuselage. Uh, and have a look what else we're left to do. So there we go, they're all uh, de-seamed, polished, buffed, uh, masked, as you can see. Uh, taking me probably 20 minutes to mask them off, not too long. Not really the most complex shapes uh, at all really, but nice and simply done. Hopefully they'll have uh, nice clean uh, frame lines when we uh, unmask them all. So what we need to do now is we need to attach this part to here like so, I'm going to try and get it in the position it should be which is about there and then that part needs holding back like so and we're good to go so what we're going to do, this needs a slight little Get it back out, it's a nice tight fit. Even with that, so what I'm going to do, I need to just bend this back a little bit. So I'm not bending it, I'm just putting a bit of pressure on it. Hopefully, letting the plastic stretch to get it to the position we want, which is hopefully around about there. And then the glue will do the rest and hold it for us. So there we go, we're very nearly there now, as you can see. So the glue will get the rest, and it's going to make sure we're in the right position, which is there. There are six locating lugs under the canopy, along each one, and there's locating holes in that framework as well. So we just have a look around, make sure we get it where we want. Then get our UV glue. A little bit of masking tape to pop it on. You've seen me do this before, uh, well I think you have anyway. Not sure. Now, I know you've done it in other videos, but we'll do it in this. You know, UV UV key ring as well. You can barely see under these studio lights. And we just need a bit of UV glue, a cocktail stick, and our frame out. So what we're going to do? We're just going to apply it. in and around those locating logs, try and keep it off any of the interior parts what we're going to do is going to apply a little little dab here and there on the actual the parts and that should hopefully give us enough that we'll get, we'll get some purchase there and then on top where we've got this part that keeps swinging out we're going to put a little bit there just in a few different positions on our way around what am I 
dogs just woke up now. He's having a good shake behind. And then get the, uh, the framework, get it in position. Hopefully we've got too much drama like so. So there we go, that's it. We're going to leave that part to the last. What we're going to do is we're going to hit all these bits. As we go, you can see it there on the, uh, the screen. It's going to hold it back as we go. Flip around, find a little bit of pressure as we go. Just harden it round. And once we've got it roughly where we want it, we then push that in position like so. And again, give it a zap. It's not quite got it, so we need to hold it a little bit longer by the look of it. And then go all around. Hold it for a few seconds. Hopefully that's now got it. Which it has. So there we go, that's glued in, it's all held, and what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to go around, it takes probably, I'd say, five seconds to finally cure and get a grip, and I like to just go around in key places, just give it a good 10 to 15 seconds holding it on, that way you then know it's glued on, it's not going to pop off on you, um, at the worst, most inopportune time, which is probably halfway through priming, uh, it's happened to me before. So once you're happy with one side, move on to the next. Obviously where there are glue marks you can they'll be painted anyway. So they shouldn't be seen. There we go, I'm happy with that. Have a quick inspection, make sure you're happy with it. Get yourself a cocktail stick. Wet it and just go over the edges where maybe a little bit has gone over. This is, you should ideally do this before you use the uh, the light to activate it. But at the place we were then we couldn't really do it. But I'm just going to go around in case any remnants left. Hopefully we can take it off. So there's one done. Framework's in. Uh, that sits in position. I'm going to move that out of the shot. Need a little bit more glue for this bit. So we'll get that on the go in a minute. Get this over first. So that fits in like so. Like I say, I think I'm going to glue it in position. I'm not too fussed on the canopy open. I did do the MIG with its canopy open, but this one I'm probably going to do a canopy shut. Problem being with that is I doubt we'll be able to use the UV glue because the framework stops actual um, life from penetrating. But We'll see. If we can get a tight fit, I'll leave it open. Uh, as long as it holds itself shut. Then it's no problem while spraying it. Now, the front one, I've test fitted this before. Uh, well, I remember as well, on that front cowl, we've got the head-up display. You can see it there, it's a bit of acetating. Absolute nightmare to put in, but looks the part. Looks really well. Test fit that. That fits in. Perfect now. So what we're going to do, while we've got the rear part of the camera, I'm going to get more of the UV glue. This stuff is, oh, I absolutely love this UV glue. It is my favourite thing at the minute. I know I keep going on about it, but it's just absolutely amazing. So quick, so clean, so simple, cheap, it's not even that expensive to buy, and it just works flawlessly. Absolutely flawlessly. Really can't recommend it enough. Right, so apply to the glass. Now because this is a part we can't get underneath to clean, try and be as clean as possible applying it. What I'm doing I'm literally touching the the bubble of glue to it and then pulling it back without touching it. That way we get a nice string of the glue. The other beauty of this is no reason to rush. I don't know how long it will actually take to dry under normal light but I come back to it an hour later. We've got a bit too much there. We'll have to wipe that off in a minute. I come back to it an hour later and it's still been, still been wet, exactly like it was when it came out of the bottle. So 
There's no rush, no panic. Just put it in. You've got all the time in the world to manoeuvre it. You can take it back off, should you wish. Uh, there really is no dramas at all. The only thing that's important, like I'm doing now, is if you get any excess anywhere, make sure you get it off. Because now is your time. It does dry clear, so it's not really the end of the world, but it's it pays to be neat, obviously. There we are, so we pop it on, get it roughly in position, which is there, it actually clicks in place beautifully. Like so. Make sure you're happy, have a good look, make sure it's sat central of the other one. It is then cut our stick. I have no idea. I haven't like that one, so it's fine. Getting any excess off around the front and sides and the other side. Bit of pressure on top. UV key ring. Give it a zap. You should have one perfect canopy. What we'll do then is we'll check that rear part. Hopefully. Be nice if it stays on by itself because then we can leave it open and we can have it displayed open or shut as we wish, which is nice because it shows off the cockpit a little bit better. It is a big glass area on the uh, F15, so if not, it's not the end of the world. Hopefully, that's glued in place now. So, what I'm going to do now, we're just going to put a couple of dabs of the UV glow on the very front. Of the canopy. Just to hold it shut while we're firing, because it is a little bit springy. I'll try and keep you guys in shot. Quite awkward to get it to fit. Yeah, it is quite springy, so I don't want it popping open, because that's just going to cause no end of problems. So, put it on, give it a quick zap. Hopefully, we can get the uh, UV glue under there. Fingers crossed. Bit awkward the other side. I think that's got that. I'm not going to pull on it too much. Yeah, that's got that perfectly. Right, so I'll zoom us out so we can have a look. So there we go, there's the canopy on. Like I say, we a little bit of the paint around the front, no dramas whatsoever then. And what I'll do, once everything's dry, I've got a little bit of mist services to remove in a few key places, just where we had a little bit of uh, the race light seam showing, a little bit underneath, I uh, just showed you before. Just here, you can see we're taking the paint off and test sprayed it. A little bit there, we need to apply a little bit of mist service just along there. We'll go around the entire aircraft, check for any glue marks, uh, anything that shouldn't be there. We'll buff it all off um, with a buffer, and then we are literally prepared for paint. So, uh, sadly, that's us for today. I'll also go through the instructions, make sure there's nothing else that can be stuck on. That maybe the old pylon I can stick on in place. Uh, it's literally anything and everything that can be glued on now that's not going to get in the way of weathering stages later. Um, Make sure all these seams are perfect for ourselves. Uh, and then we can come back with a coat of it'll be grey AK primer. Then we'll pre-shade it. We've got the base colour down, which I believe is a, or FS. I can't remember the colour now. Uh, FS and there's another darker grey. So just two greys and it's quite a, not a bland camo scheme, but quite a simple one. So nothing really too technical to use. Um, when we come back to paint it, we'll paint it with ACAM paints. I've got the FS colours appropriate for this aircraft. So you can see those in use as well, and they are fantastic paints. Especially thin of our thinner, they work flawlessly. Absolutely brilliant, so we'll get those in action. And hopefully, um, a few more parts, I reckon. We've got one for priming. Next part, so part seven will be priming, pre-shading. Maybe the base coat down. Uh, part eight, we'll get the... Uh, camo scheme down and then we get a bit of uh, bleaching panel fading on that then a wash uh, sorry not, not a wash then a clear coat then the decals which there aren't too many of I reckon four more parts will be done um, just cracking looking aircraft I love the F-15 F-14, 15, 16 are some of my favourite aircraft I love them in jets I've got one of each in my stash I've got two F-14s I've got this obviously F-15 the F-18 uh, the Great Wall Hobby, the single-seater one, this is due out at uh, the end of the month, so I'll be getting that as well. Absolutely superb. Uh, I just love the uh, painted weapon effects you can do on them, the bleaching, 
panel fade and the post shade and I think it just looks absolutely fantastic. F16 is the uh, 132 is one of my favourite builds to date. Uh, you can probably just about see some of the uh, the wing in the background there next to the cabinet. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting this one done. Obviously we've still got the undercarriage to do the ordnance. So, Alright, so maybe there might be five parts. We'll see. I'm in no rush to get it done uh, part wise. I try to get them out as quick as I can. I know a lot of people ask me when the next part out. Uh, my free time is taken up a lot with the forum, with UMP, with my own builds. You know, this is my hobby at the end of the day. Um, I don't want to be spending every waking moment making a video because it drains you a little bit to do. Um, and, you know, I do these for free. Got to remember that. Uh, we're not a paid site, so there's no, um, you know, fees for you guys, what have you. So, well, I appreciate the interest when people ask me when the next part's out. You also got to appreciate that my time is my own. And I don't want my hobby to become that monotonous. I get bored of doing it. So that's why it is. So we're we'll back part seven pretty soon. Uh, like I said, I'm going to get it all tidied up. Check all those seams. Uh, make sure everything's on there that we can. I think there's a few little bits of bobbers. In the amendment sheet I've got, they're just antenna, sensors and what have you. Just need glue on. They don't need small parts. Uh, when I come back next time, I'll, I'll mention anything else that's been glued on. Um, and that's it. So thanks for watching today, guys. Bit of a shorter video today. I think about half an hour. Maybe a bit shorter, actually, once it's edited, because the cameras have been running while I've been doing stuff as well. But we're just at that stage now where it's ready for prime. I'm not going to prime it on camera today, because there's no point. We'll do it all next time in the spray booth uh, in one hit. So there you go. So thanks for watching, guys. Let me know what you think about the uh, face-to-camera bit. I think it makes it a bit more personal, as long as you don't mind staring at my ugly face. Um, if you do, then that's fine. It's not a problem. I think it's better than the, uh, the frontal view I had over there, I think that was a bit wasted to be honest we've got the overhead, we've got the sides I think they've covered pretty much everything so I think it, this gives it a bit more personal view um, and it allows me to talk to you guys as well, which is always good so there you go, so I'll catch you next time see you soon, take care and I'll see you on ISM